aoemediaand.de are yearly sponsors of Casper's podcasts. This particular episode was sponsored by Link Factory. So, um, welcome to a very interesting podcast about Templar Vola. And um, I have Ron Hall from Dallas, Texas with mm -hmm. me today. Yeah, it's good to be here. How are you, Ron? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. It's been good. a great conference. Yeah. Uh, we are at the T3Con uh, 09. And... Um, Uh, we have just had two days with a lot of interesting talks and meeting up with people mm -hmm. from the community, networking and having fun. So it's been a great time. Um, Ron has uh, been working with Templar Ola for a long time mm -hmm. uh, and specifically the flexible content elements. And could you give me some introduction to, to what you're going to demonstrate now? Well, what, uh, as I started working with Templar Ola, and it's, originally I started with modern template building, and which worked very well for me. And then, then um, eventually I moved to Temple of Allah for one reason, and that was flexible content elements. And the reason is, is that um, I am not an extension developer. I am a site builder and a, a visual designer, and, uh, and I know TypoScript, but I don't program extensions. I have those programmed for me when needed. And I found out that many times uh, what many would resort to an extension for, I could, I could accomplish through flexible content mm -hmm. elements. So this is why I moved to Temple Voila. And as I worked with it, I started trying to figure out ways to standardize my code so that I could adapt to a wide variety of layouts and yet still uh, at, yet have standardized code so that it would be efficient and quick to develop in Temple Voila. And also try to cut down on the number of times I had to map page templates as mm -hmm. well as well. Um, whenever I tried to put something like this, what happened originally when I was, um, was looking at this is I was working on a site and I'd been working with Temple Law for a while and I was taking it over from another developer and he mentioned to me that he had intended to, um, to, um, um, to use a flexible content and not to break up an area into columns and I'd never done that before and I thought that was a, to me that was an interesting concept mm -hmm. at the time. And as I started thinking about that, I started thinking of ways that I could also construct a system that page editors could modify drastically the look of their page without having to resort to new page templates. And that's really what this is all based on. So. Sounds very interesting. Yes. Um, we have right here um, an installation of, of my starter site. Maybe I'll just start by saying that you, yes. you had a tutorial, actually. Yes, I did. On, on Thursday at the conference here. Mm -hmm. so, um, This this is going to be like an overview of what sure. it's about, sure. and um, I'm, I'm sure you'll be able to find a, a way to to join another tutorial by Ron, maybe in Dallas, Texas, in maybe so 2010. But but this is an overview of the technology. So yes, and I also have a site that's um, that's temploala.busynoggin.com, mm -hmm. and that it it gives a full explanation of the entire uh, system. This is not getting Temple Ola to do new things. What it is 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 looking at Temple Ola and, f and finding a, a, a set of uh, favorite practices and, uh, and a code that allows you to, uh, to move from site to site quickly with it. Yeah. So, um, I have a starter site that I use in developing all my sites. Um, <clears throat> it starts off looking like this. It's very plain. It has mm -hmm. a wireframe. Um, I actually use this wireframe when I'm planning out my sites with my clients uh, as, a, uh, as a working wireframe. And uh, it runs on, the, uh, on this framework. Um, on the back end, I'm going to show you something that's kind of a central um, um, tenet of this. Um, you'll see the back end looks somewhat different. We'll, yeah. we'll, we will get to that here in a moment. Uh, however, one of the things that I have is that this entire system is based on um, a set of core files, which are the map page templates. And then I override a lot of um, what's going on in those templates with skins. Uh -huh. So currently we're running on a, on a wireframe skin, and that's the one that's just plain white. Yeah. Uh, it looks like this. And I'm going I'm to change, we happen to have in this particular installation a demo skin, a blue mm -hmm. skin. Uh, and I'm going to switch to that. So let me go ahead and quickly do that. I just go to the list view. I need to go to the uh, TypoScript template. And basically I change four file paths. Um, I'm going to rename this one blue. Now, I'm not the fastest typist in the world, and, more s and less so when people are watching me, <laughs> but I will get by. So I've changed a couple of paths in the constants, and I've pay um, I also changed one in the um, TS setup, and then I changed one other path in the uh, TS config. 
Okay, so four places. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then I clear the cache. I do that a lot. Okay, so we have this to start with. When we refresh the page, it takes a moment. There's a lot of image magic on this particular skin. Right. We now have a new skin. Wow. Now, initially, where, I've, where I got the inspiration for some of this, initially, is when I started thinking through this, was through um, um, CSS Zen Garden, which mm -hmm. I don't know how many are familiar with that. CSN, CSS Zen Garden is a site, it's an experimental site. And what it, um, what it has, let's go to, um, what it is, is a site in which designers, they give designers the same HTML, and they have them through CSS modify the page uh -huh. using only CSS and nothing else. And so like when you look at these layouts, these are all exactly the same HTML, only the designers use different CSS. Okay. And, as I start, and of course, as a front-end coder, which is one of the main things that I do, um, I started applying those principles, but I also realized that when you add, the, the, when you add typo script in the mix, which allows you to change the underlying structure, it can, gives you, it can give you a lot of power. And so what happens on these skins is that at first glance, it's obvious that the CSS has changed, just like in CSS in yeah. Garden. However, quite a bit more has changed because in the other layout, you did not have this uh -huh. menu at the top. Right. Uh, additionally, the, the menu that you have here is still a text menu, but Typo 3 is generating the background images to create the fancy font on the back. Okay. Um, also, I've changed up, of course, the logo. I've changed this. Um, additionally, there's an additional wrapping div that allows me to put a gradation on the background. Mm -hmm. So in addition to the CSS, the, um, the structure of the page has actually changed, the yeah. HTML structure. Yeah. However, when we switched from one look to another, we did not remap the template. The template is still the same. Mm -hmm. And how that's accomplished is if you look at, um, perhaps the best way is to go back to the finder and, um, and look, at, um, look at what I have here. Oh, I have to cl close out of this. All right, let's see here. We've got Frankfurt Demo, and we have templates. And so here are our skins. Um, we will just uh, go to this view. Actually, we will not go to that view. Um, and uh, let's go ahead and click this one open. Okay, here we go. Okay, these are, these are the two skins right here. This is the wireframe skin, which has mm -hmm. CSS, JavaScript, yeah. and TypoScript. Mm -hmm. And the blue demo skin, which also has those plus some ad additional. Basically, every skin carries its own TypoScript. Um, this is, has constants, tsconfig, and also TypoScript. And these contain objects like for the header, the footer, and others that you can rewrite in these skins. Right. So as you switch from one skin to another, the, uh, you, can, you can drastically alter the HTML structure underneath, mm -hmm. as well as the CSS, as well as the JavaScript. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, in the, in the demo skin that we just saw, I also include a font because I'm using an a, um, um, image magic to yeah. rewrite a lot of the things. So this is one of the things that I do, um, is I find out ways to, to, um, to use the same page templates, but be able to modify them pretty drastically mm -hmm. from installation to installation. In fact, you could have a, a single typo 3 installation with maybe four sites running on it. They could all be running off the same core templates, yeah. but they could be, have different skins for each one. And that's how that would work. Um, you know, and like CSS, TypoScript can be overwritten at different places in the page tree, which yes. means that you can change things and makes it mm -hmm. very, very powerful. Now, in addition to that, I've also tried to make the most of every single page template in terms of layout. Um, to give you an example, um, I'm going to go to this page right here, and it's the page that we're looking at. And currently, we have a, um, a, a just a left menu, and we also have this. Uh, you'll notice that I arrange my content in tabs in my major areas. And so I'm going to add an image at the top in what I call the feature area. And uh, we're going to just take something very quickly. Find me a nice same little sky image. We're going to do this. And we do not have to clear any cache. This is the page that we started with. 